Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's uh, episode is going to be a little bit different than normal. Normally we show you uh, how we're catching fish and the way that we're catching fish. But today we're actually just going to be sitting down and talking to you about the three most important things uh, to know and to understand when crappie fishing. And this is more important than your bait. This is more important than the poles that you use. This is more important than the line or the brand boat that you have or what the weather's doing. But these three things, understanding this is the most important thing to understand to consistently put big crappie in the boat. And what are those three things? That is really the three C's of crappie fishing. Bait control, boat control, and consistency. And we'll start off with boat control. Being able to control your boat, if you can't control your boat, it doesn't matter if you have the exact bait that the fish want, it doesn't, and this is if you're fishing from a boat. If you're fishing from uh, a land or a dock, then you, it, it, this isn't gonna matter as much because you'll have a little bit more control over what you're doing. But say you are fishing from a boat, as most of us do crappie fish, what you're gonna have to be able to do is to control where your boat is located in the water relative to where the fish are. And I've got a marker board here. We'll kind of try to explain that a little bit. But say just typical fishing in the lake, here is your brush pile. So where your boat is located in reference to this brush pile is going to be important, especially depending on whether you are spider rigging, casting, whatever type of fishing you're doing, it's gonna be important that you are able to control your boat. Um, and there's different ways that you can do it. You can do it with anchoring. The way that I do it is with the trolling motor. And a lot of times what you're gonna to wanna to do is say you've got wind coming this way. Instead of, if you know that this brush pile is here, instead of setting up here to where the wind is gonna push you over it, set up right here to where the wind's gonna keep you pushed off of the brush pile. Another thing that you're gonna to have to understand is, and you can use buoy markers, there's different things to be able to set that up, but say here's the brush pile. You make your cast, you're wanting to cast past the brush pile. Here's our boat. You wanna cast past the brush pile and pull it to it. Well, you're on the boat, wind's pushing, and you make your perfect cast right here, meaning that the bait is gonna come right over the brush pile. Well, understanding that here's where your brush pile is, now the wind has changed directions and you get a big gust here. When your boat is sitting here and you have wind here, this is very simple stuff, it's gonna push you over here. So now you're pushed over here in your, in your sailboat and you've made this cast. Well now, instead of being able to pull your bait over here, you're gonna miss the brush pile. And if the fish are on here, you're not gonna be able to get to it. So being able to understand that and know that, that is very important. And one of the ways that, especially with crappie fishing, that anglers are using now to help this control is they're using um, the, the trolling motors in the back of the boat. I think they call them crappie brakes. And that is definitely a great way to, you know, utilize technology to be able to help you fish. In that instance, you're able to fish with the wind to your back, which in some situations is a lot better. It helps with boat slap. And what that is, is that is, as you're approaching this brush pile, say that you're not doing like I do and cast them, but say you're just gonna single pole jig it. As you approach this brush pile and these waves are rolling over and the boat's going up and down, up and down, it's gonna smack that water. That is something that scares the fish quite a bit. Other thing is if you're straight pulling these fish and you are utilizing live scope, you've gotta be able to sometimes keep that bait right in the strike zone. So say you've got a tree limb here and a tree limb here, and you've got big crappie. I'm gonna erase this little brush pile. Let's say you've got a tree limb here, a tree limb here, you've got a big crappie that's holding right here. And you've had your bait up here for a while and it just won't look up. Sometimes you have to get that bait down in there. Well, uh, and you've seen on a lot of my videos, I walk around the deck of the boat. But another thing is if you're sitting down, you've gotta be able to drive yourself where you're able to hold yourself and consistently hold yourself to where you're able to put that bait right on the fish's nose to get it to turn up. So boat control is definitely, it doesn't matter how good you are at casting, it doesn't matter if you can 
take a 130 second ounce sinker or bait, cast it 40 feet, and put it in a uh, the hole of a lifesaver. If once you make that cast, if you can't keep your boat in a position to where you'll either be bringing the bait back across through there or where you're able to stay on the fish, it's not going to matter. So boat control is extremely, extremely important. The second thing is bait control. So we have boat control. I think my marker's going dead. You have bait control. And this kind of plays into effect with boat control. So you've got crappie right here, crappie right here, and then you've got a big crappie right here. Now this is very poor. I did not do well in drawing class. Well, as you bring this bait, you make the cast, and the bait is coming over top of the fish. The main thing that you don't want to do once this fish, you have this fish's attention, is dip to it. You, you never want to dip to it. If, you, if you're bringing it as a constant, then you dip, and then you start coming back, that dip is going to throw these fish off. Nine out of 10 times, once you dip, it's gonna turn the fish off, it's gonna turn away, and it's not gonna go. Now that's to say, once you have the fish's attention, it, you know, you make the cast and it's popping down, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. Fish starts nosing up and then you start bringing it away from the fish, you're good. But if you're bringing it away and then all of a sudden you slow down and it starts to dip or instead of coming up or in a straight line, it starts doing this sag motion here and the fish is falling it, nine out of 10 times that fish is gonna lose interest. So being able to control that bait. Um, and this, this kind of goes into the boat control. You know, if you're in a uh, situation where you're fishing, and this is what ends up, I catch a lot of fish this way, that you've made the cast and the wind is pushing you away from the structure. So you've got uh, structure, and my pen has completely went dead. But you've got structure here, and you have made your cast, here you are in your boat, and you've made your cast, and then the wind's pushing you away. A lot of times I'll just quit reeling or even start dropping my rod tip down so that I am constantly making sure that this bait is doing what I want it to do. But, and, and I've talked to several anglers, a lot of times it isn't so much the bait, of course, having the right bait uh, helps, but a lot of times it's all in presentation and how that fish wants it. And some of the, sometimes the fish is going to want the bait either coming at a, coming straight across. There's other times they want it held still. That's one of the, the reasons why uh, we straight pull a lot of times versus, um, versus cast. It, you know, we're in December right now. These fish, uh, not really the ones that we're seeing, not really wanting vertical jigged uh, presentation. So that's why we're casting to it. But it's it's about being able to control that bait and make that bait manipulate a uh, bait fish or give the the indication of what this fish wants it to do before it will commit to biting it. So if you it doesn't matter if you're using the same exact thing that Wally Marshall or Hayden Jeffries or any of these professionals are using, you may be using the same bait that they won national championships with on the same day that they're doing it. If you do not present it in the same way that they present it, you're not gonna catch fish. And then lastly, the last thing to help you put more fish in the boat uh, is consistency. You, you've, got to, you've got to be on the water. Um, you know, going once, twice a year, you're not honing your skills. I mean, think of LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and the way that they became great at playing basketball. It wasn't from talking about playing basketball or watching other people play basketball. It was from actually going and playing basketball. And if you're not consistently staying on the water and practicing these skills and doing perfect practice, um, you're not gonna get any better. You know, they say practice makes perfect, but that's not true. Perfect practice makes perfect. So going in and sometimes, you know, it, you're not always gonna have the perfect scenario. You got a fish in the wind, you've got a fish, um, <laughs> like today, today is, uh, we're fishing and we get a call that a tornado warning's coming in, which is actually 
a great day to fish and we've got footage from that we're going to work on that later but just staying consistent you know fishing you can't just fish during the spawn you can't just fish during summer you know fishing all year round will definitely help you to to develop those skills to where you're going to be able to consistently put fish in the boat but yes i know everybody's looking for that that magic bait or that one setting on live scope that that really changes the game I'm telling you, go. It's just consistently fishing, consistently having good boat control, and consistently having good bait control. That's what's. That's why all these guys are winning these tournaments. It isn't because they know something that you don't, or because they have some uh, unattainable edge that uh, that you have. Of course, some of them are just uh, gifted fishermen. They're much more gifted than uh, than others, and much more gifted than me. But it's because they're, you know, for the most part, they're just outworking us. And uh, that's why they're able to, to put those fish in the boat. So if you work on your boat control, your bait control, your presentation, and consistently just going fishing, I promise you, you will put bigger and more uh, fish in the boat. You'll make your limit more often. So I hope this hasn't been too boring. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to get to editing some of the footage that we had from this weekend and from the, some of our other trips. And we hope to see you on the water.